where should people start out in terms of how do I put together my marketing strategy and what's worked for you in the past? Now on the door to door side, there's a huge benefit because frankly, most times in door to door, you're not paying for something until a result has been achieved. But the other benefit to the YouTube strategy is the, the evergreen nature of YouTube. Well, in today's training, you know, as we mentioned, we're, we're going to be talking about how to develop a winning marketing strategy. Uh, and this is so important, too, because when you're talking about success in a solar sales business, you know, having having great salesmanship, having great sales skills uh, is, is excellent. And that's a lot of what we teach you in Solar Surge University is how to develop a, a really finely tuned professional sales process and sales technique. Uh, but if you don't have a constant stream of opportunities, where you can actually get down face to face or on a screen call, a Zoom call, you know, face to face with a real qualified prospect. It doesn't matter how great of a salesperson you are, you're not going to be selling anything because you're just not on the playing field. And so, one of the things that differentiates the best solar companies and the best solar sales companies out there is not just their sales script or their sales process, but it's actually their entire marketing strategy and their entire marketing system that puts their players in a position where they can actually sell and close. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, now, as many of you know, there, there are many different ways that you can market your solar sales business. You can do online marketing, online advertising. Uh, many of you maybe came from the door-to-door -door background, which by the way, just in terms of just from a repeatable, scalable process, the door-to-door -door system is still one of the best systems out there. And that's why so many solar sales companies are using it because it's a way that if you follow this process, you can have consistent, predictable results that you can scale up as you grow your business. So we can talk a little bit about door-to-door -door as well. Uh, of course, the, the, the technique that we use here at Solar Surge is an organic social media marketing strategy, uh, but it is a strategy. And in fact, many of you guys that are, that are watching this live stream now, many of you may have known me for six or 12 months before you ever got involved in the sales training and in Solar Surge University. And again, that, that is because of how we have structured our marketing strategy or our marketing system to make sure that we have a consistent flow of opportunities, in this case, opportunities of potential people that want to learn how to sell solar professionally. But we have a system for making sure that we constantly get that attention, that we're constantly getting new eyeballs onto the business, onto, uh, onto ourselves so that we can actually make our offer. So Dan, you know, what's been your experience? I know you've, you've been in the solar sales business for a number of years now, and I know you've tried a number of different strategies. What do you think is the key, uh, the key question here, or where should people start out in terms of how do I put together my marketing strategy and what, what's worked for you in the past? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a bunch of different things. You know, I have, like you mentioned, Joe, I've had a lot of Facebook advertising experience. I have a door to door team. Uh, that's been you know really beneficial in the past. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. I think the first key strategy though is to identify as a business owner or as maybe just a solo you know solar sales professional what type of business you want to have. And you have to just recognize the pros and cons of different marketing and advertising type of strategies. So on the one hand, for example, if you're relying heavily on Facebook. Uh, Google, YouTube, and I'm referring to the ad content, right? On Facebook, Google, YouTube, TikTok, uh, any of the social media type platforms, you're not as location limited, right? You can run that advertising in a lot of places. You can do virtual sales now more than ever. I know, you know, looking back on it, I started pivoting to doing a lot of virtual sales even before, you know, COVID in 2020 and all that happened. And it was just very convenient and fortunate timing that I was already in the groove of that as you know, the masses of people began to experience the, the new virtual world and became more familiar with it. So that's one side of it, right? If you really want to focus on virtual, uh, you want to do business, maybe you say you, you live in Virginia like I do, and you want to sell in Florida or California, Texas, New York, wherever, you can do that from a virtual perspective. Um, now, the other side of it, though, too, is maybe you want to really service your market that you work in today. Maybe you live in Florida and you really want to service the greater Tampa to Fort Myers, you know, areas, and you're willing to hop in the car, drive places, go do neighborhood canvassing, knock doors. That's where a door to door model can work really well. Or you could even just do advertising, but you still execute all of those uh, opportunities in a face to face sort of way. 
I had found over the years for me personally, Joe, to kind of answer the question that the virtual sale process was more efficient and it was a better use of my time, energy, resources. And ultimately, I was more profitable from doing it that way because it's I, I essentially figured out I could reach more people. I could create more proposals, do more presentations all by way of doing things in a virtual environment versus maybe driving an hour one direction, having a meeting that was an hour, hour and a half. I, what I did find as well is the more in-person meetings I did, the longer the meetings took, as opposed to virtual meetings tend to be a little more punctual, a little more timely. So in the same amount of time, it took me an hour to drive, hour and a half to do the meeting, hour to come home. I could have done three Zoom presentations or with our model today, how we do a lot of our stuff, I could have probably knocked out four or five, maybe even six just video presentation proposals in the recorded format that we do, which are typically about 10 to 15 minute video proposals. So there's different strategies, there's different options there. I would say on a high level, the quick pros and cons. Advertising, you're putting your money to work. Now the catch is, and the con is you've got to have money to put that to work. But if you have the money, you have the resources to invest, you're putting that money to work, you're going out and it's hunting for you, right? It's creating opportunities for you with your dollars being your employees in that case. Now on the door-to-door -door side, there's a huge benefit because frankly, most times in door-to-door, -door, you're not paying for something until a result has been achieved. So a lot of business owners look at that as being, well, hey, this is a no-brainer. Even if I have to pay the appointment setter or this individual commission for doing their, doing their job, I'm only paying them once a result's been achieved. There's also different compensation models. Maybe sometimes people are paid hourly, so that's, that wouldn't really work in that realm. Uh, what I had found, though, is that in the end, I typically would spend more money on the door-to-door -door side of things because it's not just the commissions I'm paying, but maybe it's the iPads I'm providing and the sales rabbit or canvassing tools I'm using and just other ancillary things that go along. Maybe I'm covering their transportation costs or whatever. So I found that advertising in this online pay-per-lead through companies like Solar Reviews, who we've recommended, and others in the past, or just or your own personal Facebook advertising, have ended up working better. But happy to we can dive into that a little bit more. Um, but I think a lot of it starts when you're starting out. You just need to identify what type of business do you want to have. Do you want to do things more in person? Do you want to do things more virtually? From there, you have a path that you can begin to follow. Sounds good. Sounds good. And, you know, I, I would agree with you, Dan. I think, you know, for somebody like me, I prefer the virtual, I prefer the online engagement because I can, I can get in front of more people. I mean, I think that's, that's the bottom line is I can get in front of more people. That's why I like YouTube so much is because I can, I can get the content out there. I can get the information out there so that more people will know me. And then of course, when it's time to do business, and, and this is you know, just part of my philosophy here is, you know, is if you can provide value, if you can be the person who's educating your prospect, you know, you're already positioned in their mind as, as the trusted expert. When it's time to do business, now you're already framed well, you're already positioned well. It's like, okay, this is a guy I trust. All we have to do now is just kind of sort through the details and get the paperwork done. And that's yeah, not to mention like. too, the other the other benefit. And I don't mean to cut you off, Joe, but the other benefit to the YouTube strategy is the the evergreen nature of YouTube, right? And essentially meaning, hey, you put one video up, and even if it goes viral for a thirty day period of time, it's not that that video is ever going to have negative viewership. It's going to continue to still tick up over time. It might not be as aggressive. But that content, you put it out there, that content lives forever. So that's a big value of the YouTube side uh, for sure. And obviously, we've seen that firsthand here at, at Solar Surge as a business when it comes to how we help our, our homeowner you know, clientele. Absolutely. No, that, that that's a key point. And so for any of you who are considering YouTube, I think I think that's one of the key advantages of YouTube over Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn is that generally, you know, those those other platforms, it's like, oh, what's kind of trending today? What's on my feed today? Whereas YouTube, a lot of people will go to YouTube specifically to search for a particular product or ask a question. Um, or they'll go to Google to ask a question, but Google will incorporate YouTube videos in their results. It's not just, you know, text-based or blog articles. YouTube will incorporate, uh, or sorry, Google search will incorporate YouTube videos in their search results based on how, how relevant they believe it is to the question. So many advantages to YouTube. And we could talk more. We, we could probably do a whole training just on how to develop a YouTube strategy or how to get started on YouTube because that's personally what I've really been able to, to dial up with. Um, but we use other strategies as well. I've used Facebook ads, um, currently using some paid leads from solar reviews. So, so this is not, not just a company that we're, you know, we've endorsed, but we're actually a customers of as well. Um, and have used them very, very successfully throughout the years. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, 
But the key thing here is you have to have a system that provides predictable results, which means that, first of all, you have to measure your results. And Dan, I'd like to ask you a little bit more about some of the KPIs that you track to like see how effective a marketing campaign is returning. Um, so you have to be able to measure the results and you have to be able to really step back and look at it objectively and say, OK, which of these marketing strategies are working and which ones are not and be able to do that in a systematic, controlled manner. Because, guys, I'll, I'll tell you, 90 percent of the solar marketing companies out there, it's not it's not good results. And if you actually run the numbers on it and I'm not trying to call anybody out or name names, but if you actually run the numbers on it, you'll find that you're paying, you know, three, four, five, six thousand dollars per sale if you get any sales at all. And that kills you as a starting up independent sales rep, because if you put all your cash out and I've, I've talked to a number of sales reps that are getting getting started in the business or just getting started as an independent, you know, as an independent dealer or an independent rep. And, you know, they I, I can tell they, they, they got sold on one of these. Hey, we're going to fill your calendar up. It's going to be great appointments. We're going to set all the appointments for you. We've got the call center working for you. It's going to be great. And then when you actually ask, well, how many proposals did you put out? How many appointments actually sat down, talked to you? And then you realize like it's not actually working. And that's the problem. And again, guys, I get it because I every time I go onto LinkedIn, every time I go onto YouTube, I get it. I've, I've probably seen half dozen ads today. Hey, solar panel company, do you need some leads? You know, and again, I, I get it. It sounds great, but you have to really know what works and what doesn't. In my opinion, 90% of it doesn't work. And that's why, again, we offer the free strategy call, especially for those of you that are investing in Solar Surge University and putting in the time to learn the professional sales process. We have to marry that up with an effective marketing process as well. And so, again, that's why we offer the free strategy call so that we can talk to you one on one about your particular situation and, and frankly, just share our experience of what works, what doesn't work in our experience and what do some of the numbers look like. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, at this point, I'll I'll kick it kick it over to you. Yeah, no, it's important. I think one of the the big things here um, we can kind of kick off with is on the Facebook side or Meta, right? So that's an area where you know for quite a long time people have been doing advertising. That was where when I ventured off and I started Radiant Solar, I really doubled down hard to understand. Okay, how do you do advertising, right? How do you do Facebook advertising? What does this look like? And the playing fields are always slightly shifting. I don't remember the exact date, but I know that Apple, when they rolled out a new security feature in one of their iOS softwares, it, it limited the ability for Facebook to accurately target the right audiences. And so you got to kind of keep up with these things. One thing you'll learn as a business owner, as a you know a person looking to generate leads online for whatever your service is, your in this case solar, you've got it. You find yourself being a jack of all trades, right? You're trying to learn and master the lead generation opportunities and stuff that are out there. So some of the quick ones that I pay attention to uh, quite a bit on my side, number one, obviously, is whatever my budget is, right? So when it comes to Facebook, these are the main metrics that I like to look at is what is my my budget? Typically, that's going to be set in a daily budget, right? Am I going to spend $10 a day? Am I going to spend $300 per day? Like what is my, my total spend going to be? Uh, and there's been a lot of times for those that are listening, I mean, you know, this might be a big number to some, small number to others, but I think back in 2022, I spent about $170,000 on Facebook advertising. Now that number, again, for some might be big, for some small, but if you're just a, starting out in the industry or you've got a small business that you're looking to grow, that number might sound huge. But I can tell you as well that every dollar that I spent on Facebook advertising returned a multiple of about three to four on those on those dollars. So I wouldn't have spent the money if I wasn't earning, you know, commissions and earning revenue as a result of doing it. Now, some campaigns have worked well, some don't. I keep an eye on things and kind of track. And what I really am focusing on, this goes back to some trainings that we've done before, but it's really all about CPA or cost per acquisition, right? How much does it take? How many dollars am I spending to acquire one new piece of business or one new sale? There's other metrics that I'll measure as well, but that's kind of the big overarching one that my business kind of lives and dies on. And then from there, when I'm running an ad or running something on Facebook, I want to focus a little more clearly on a couple other key metrics. So you have your budget. You obviously have your results, right? How many leads are being generated? You have your cost per result, they call it on Facebook, or really it's your cost per lead. What is that showing? But again, don't be fooled that just because you have a low cost per lead, that means that it's working great, right? It might not. You might have the ad copy or the ad creative, right? The creative being 
the logo, the design, the image that is being served up or the video that's being served up and the ad copy being the caption and the writing that is in that, those things could not, you know, maybe they're not uh, meshing well. Maybe you're attracting a certain client or a certain demographic or a certain whatever it is. And so you're getting really low cost per leads, but none of them are converting. That, that doesn't do you any good. On the flip side of it though, too, you don't want to have a cost per lead that is 80, 90, a hundred dollars and you know you're not converting those because if you have a thousand dollar budget and you've got a hundred dollar leads right you've got 10 leads 10 opportunities you really you better close one of those 10 in order to properly uh have a have a healthy cpa which typically a number that we're targeting we've talked about this before but it's anything that's about 1500 and less if you can get a thousand or less that's really good if you can get below that 750 500 you've got a really really good formula um but what I've seen is over the past you know, two months, I was testing a new ad. It was a battery comparison ad that I have been running for a while. Um, and I could actually pull some numbers here. I've never, never shared my screen here before, Joe, on our live stream. So I think I can figure this out. Let's see. Present. Let's go share screen. And let's just go to this, uh, this window here. All right. Coming through on your side, Joe? Yeah, looks good. Cool. I mean, it's small, but it's it's there. Yeah, it's small. Um, but this is a good example, right? So this is a, a an ad that I have been running. Uh, just looking at the data from September first to October thirty first, right? Just as an example, I was only running this at ten dollars a day. You know, so it wasn't a huge aggressive budget. In the end, I've actually only spent uh, six hundred and nine dollars on this this ad here overall. But I can tell you that I have made one sale successfully out of the $609 that was spent. So from a CPA perspective, that's a phenomenal CPA, right? Logic would tell you, hey, if you can do that, scale it, grow it more. Now, this particular ad, the only reason I'm not scaling it more aggressively is because a lot of the clients that we were generating, a lot of the lead interest, which were people that already owned solar systems and they were looking to add on battery. That's not really the core product that I want to be selling is battery only. Now, ideally, the leads that were coming in here, I was filtering them and saying, hey, we can't do battery only, but we can do a, you know, a solar add-on plus battery, which is really the, the target of what we're looking to accomplish. But what you can see is I have a $10 per day budget here. 81 leads were generated at a cost per lead of $7.52, so really low cost per lead. But again, to the point I made earlier, this cost per lead is very low because a lot of the people that were clicking on it already owned solar systems. So it wasn't, you know, if you factor that and extrapolated that out, it probably is not the most ideal um, uh, cost per lead number to be at. Total clicks, 807 clicks. I like paying attention to unique clicks as well. The unique clicks are telling me how many unique people are clicking on them. You have your cost per click ratio, you have your click through rate. Again, how many unique people are clicking through or what, what the percentage of unique visitors is that are clicking through the ad to the actual lead form, right? The capture form. The frequency is how often that ad is being served back up to the same person. The higher the number this gets, the, the worse it is. You don't want the same people seeing your ad over and over and over and over again. So you typically want that number to be a little lower, what the impressions are, the reach are, and then ultimately how much have I spent? So again, when I'm really looking at this, the main things I'm first kind of looking at is, is what is my budget? How many leads have I generated? What are my cost per leads? And then a lot of times I'll focus on what my unique clicks are and my click-through rate to get an idea of if that number's in a good spot. A click-through rate of 5% is a really good click-through rate here. Typically on a lower end, I might see you know 2%, 3%. And then ultimately it translates to, okay, well, how much have I really spent? And then in my CRM, I'm tracking, okay, well, how many sales have I made, right? Like, where am I at? How many appointments? And those are some of the KPIs I now focus on from the business perspective of saying how many appointments were scheduled, how many showed, how many no-showed, how many canceled, how many um, ultimately moved to the sale process. And we keep a KPI tracker of that activity as well. But this is just a quick little overview of, uh, of what I like to track when it comes to something in Facebook as an example just to, uh, to give sort of a reference as to, a, you know, an example that I've, I'm running right now. Yeah, Dan, this is great. This is great. So um, there's a couple of things that I like about how you structured that. First of all, it sounds like even though on a yearly basis, you know, you're spending over a hundred grand on advertising in a year, but you're running these campaigns in what appear to be smaller controlled experiments, $500,000 at a time. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So part of what you're doing as well is sometimes one ad the same copy might be paired to different creatives, right? So again, you might have the same language, 
but paired to three different visuals. And I launch all of those at the same time at really, really low uh, daily budgets, right? Because I don't want to waste money. I just want to see, okay, well, what's starting to get a little bit of traction? If I notice that one of these, the numbers is drastically worse or drastically better, maybe I, I scale it up or I turn it off. So typically when I'm launching an ad, I'm launching a derivative of three of the same ones with slightly different tailoring. That tailoring could also be different audiences, right? Maybe I'm going to target demographics that are 40 to 60 years old, 30 to 50, right? Whatever that is. And just kind of figure out, okay, where is this trending? Which one of these are performing better? Turn those, the good ones up, turn the bad ones off. So that's kind of the first part. And then you turn up the throttle on whatever you're willing to, to spend there. Again, just knowing everybody that's listening to this, it's probably going to take you around $1,000 to generate your first sale. Now, if you're if you are an individual solo sales rep and you're really you're working every facet of this process, you're handling the leads, you're calling the leads, you're running the appointments, you're recalling the leads, you might be able to do that at a lower price point, right? Because you're you're putting super high attention to detail and you're jumping on every opportunity right away. You probably can get that down under a thousand dollars, seven fifty, five hundred. But as you grow and you kind of scale your business, you have to think about what kind of business do you want. I would just say the one thing to know is that no one else is, if you're the owner, no one else is going to have the same attention to detail that you have. So if you're jumping on the leads right away, just assume that your employees or the people that work with you aren't going to get to them quite as fast, which means that your numbers are going to probably run a little bit higher. But um, I digress. I don't want to go too far down that. <laughs> that, that well, uh, well, no, no, because I, I think folks need, need, to, need to know how to get started on this. I know in the past, and I, I've shared on a previous training, uh, in the past, when I've had to generate some leads at low cost, super low cost, I have sort of a go-to uh, Facebook uh, post formula, which is basically I, I use a an after electric bill. I use an electric bill from one of my clients that has solar that shows their usage zeroed out. And I just kind of black out their name and their personal details, and I'll just put it out there as a post and then boost the post. And typically, I can do that at 50, 100, 200 bucks at a time um, if I had to generate leads at a very, very low cost. But again, that's me doing the sweat equity. That's me like chatting with everybody that chats in and comments in and DMs in. So you're, you're going to have to spend some time filtering through the, the, the interested parties to actually get to the few who actually might be willing to commit to an appointment. You know, yeah. so they're going to have some, they're going to have some questions. Oh, is it free? How much does it cost? Is it a scam? You have to kind of sort through all that. But again, if you have more time and less cash, that might be a place where you start is just put up an electric bill from one of your clients. Hopefully you have some clients that are successfully installed. Say, hey, hey, my client just shared this with me. This is what their electric bill looks like now. Now it has to be local to the, the market in which you're running the ad, right? The utility company on the bill has to be, you know, whatever the, whatever the, the uh, utility is in the area where you run the ad so that people will see it, they'll recognize it, they'll know exactly what they're looking at. Uh, and then it usually will generate some interest. So Dan, I know in the past when I've had to really kind of get things going with limited resources, you know, for just two, 200, 300 bucks worth of boosted Facebook post, I've been able to get a handful of deals. Now, granted, I was running those ads like immediately in my neighborhood, like in my county. And um, I even ran my own electric bill at one point. I had my own post solar electric bill and I was able to get a handful of, you know, handful of deals. Uh, right in my immediate area there. And this, this, by the way, this was right at the beginning of COVID. So everything was kind of in turmoil. We were, we were, we were being very creative with how to, how to get something going in the new sort of post COVID uh, or, or a mid COVID lockdown world. Uh, and that was one of the, the uh, formulas that I found that worked for me. Yeah. So, so Dan, what is your, what is your sort of lead processing look like on the back end? You shared with us some numbers as far as how many leads, how many engagements you got on those campaigns. So what what happens when somebody engages with one of your Facebook ads? Does it go to chat with you or chat with one of your appointment setters? Or what, how does it workflow? Good question. Yeah. So the workflow that I have today, obviously, I had to grow to. So I'll share where I'm at today, but I'll also share, again, like for many of you watching, I had to start as being the person who handled all the leads, called all the leads, Facebook messaged all the leads, right? So like I was all of it. Uh, but today, the workflow for me is I really, really heavily leverage our backend CRM system. We've talked about it before in some other videos, but it's a custom built version of Go High Levels platform. Uh, and for those that you know are interested in how that works or kind of what we do here at Solar Surge or what I do with Radiant Solar, again, it's a, a perfect time. Book a free strategy call with us and we can dive in and kind of show a little more details as to what we do and how we do it. But essentially, Joe, the way the, the software works is the leads come in and a lot of times the call to action in the lead might be 
or I'm sorry, in the, uh, the, the landing page or the form that they're seeing, the ad they're seeing might be, hey, get this free download or get this comparison guide or whatever it is. Just a quick word from our friends over at Solar Insure. If you're considering investing in a solar power or battery backup system for your home, then you need to take a look at Solar Insure. Because Solar Insure protects you in the event that the company that does your original installation goes out of business. Now folks, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that one of the things that I keep preaching is that just as important as choosing the right equipment for your solar power system is choosing the right contractor to install that solar power system. Because your primary warranty service is going to come from your local installation contractor. And although some of the manufacturers might have great warranties, it's very impractical for a homeowner to make a direct claim on a solar panel warranty uh, or even on an inverter warranty because typically you need a skilled technician to, to perform the labor to do the work to actually replace that defective component. But the worst thing that can happen is that if that installation company goes out of business, the homeowner oftentimes is left having to hire another contractor to come and make repairs. And oftentimes they have to pay significant amounts, several thousand dollars, because frankly, most solar contractors don't want to be doing repairs on old systems. They want to be installing new systems, which is actually what drives income and profit for the business. So Solar Insure has a solution for this. It's a third party warranty that covers the entire system for 30 years, which means that if your original installation company can't make necessary repairs or maintenance, Solar Insure will reach out to another one of their enrolled partners and have that company do the service for you. Now this is a fully transferable warranty. So if you sell the home or if you intend to pass the home on to your children, uh, the, the warranty is transferable to the new owner for the entire 30 year term. Solar Insure also does fleet monitoring, including component level monitoring and diagnostics. So they might be able to spot a problem with your system before you even notice it. So make sure you ask your solar contractor if they are a Solar Insure approved provider. Because Solar Insure will do more vetting than what we typically do at the consumer level. Oftentimes homeowners might check online reviews. However, Solar Insure does a much more in-depth evaluation, including really looking at the financial strength of the company, which is going to be the best indicator of whether that contractor will be able to remain in business long term. So if you'd like more information, you can go directly to the Solar Insure website. We'll make sure we have a link in the description below so that you can get in touch with a qualified installer right away. The advertising that I like to run is typically more either product focused. Uh, like you just said, Joe, maybe it's like area focused. I've ran my power bill before. I've ran other customers' power bills before. So I'm doing something to have a little bit more appeal and relevance to people that are either A, you know, familiar with the area or B, looking have already looked into maybe solar technologies, uh, battery technologies, and they're clicking on an ad that's of interest to them because it pertains to that industry, pertains to the technology. Um, once those are coming in, though, I'm engaging them in my CRM platform that has some automations built in. As I wanted to grow my business, I knew that I could not handle every inbound lead, every communication. I needed to leverage some sort of automation to buy back some of my time. So I was able to build what they call workflows inside of the Go High Level system that will engage for me, right? It comes off as it's me. I've written the messages and I've used dynamic fields where it brings in the homeowner's name. It brings in my name, right? So it comes off as a very personable message. I've even done things just as a, a marketing strategy here. I've misspelled words on purpose to then double text, right? The little text you do afterwards with the asterisk to spell correct. I've done that just to make it very clear, like, hey, I am a real person on the other side of this. I might not be the real person sending it right away, but I'm the real person replying if you re-engage with me or if you call back, I'm the one answering the phone. And so I've built marketing and, and just nurturing strategies around that so that my system could work for me. I could handle the leads as people responded back or as people called in. And then ultimately, as I've grown, I now have a, um, a virtual assistant who is calling on my behalf, right? Their whole job is about booking appointments, setting appointments, you know, for me and my team. And that's really what they get incentivized on. So for me now, I have a system in place where that all kind of happens behind the scenes. But early on, I mean, when I ran my first couple, you know, I remember running it and just being glued to the computer because I spent my hard money and I was like, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I need to jump on every single person that comes through here. And you're kind of desperate to figure something out. But 
you know, one win became another win. And I was able to kind of get that snowball of momentum going and, and then realized, okay, Hey, now I, now I've earned the ability to kind of scale this. And sometimes it means I, I have to take some risks with things and unfortunately waste money as I'm trying to grow and find the next thing. But it, that wasn't it. When I first started, I had to just bet on myself and try to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and really that, that is where you guys should be starting, right? I mean, you, you shouldn't be starting with absolutely zero resources. There's going to be some cost to get something up and running. You know, I would say minimum a, a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. If you have a thousand bucks set aside that you can, that you can, you know, put at risk to experiment with a couple of different ad formulas and then also have the time and attention to be able to, to actually run down those opportunities as they come in, right? Whether it's DMs, chats, or a lead is texting you back with Dan's system. A lead, you know, the, his system will text outbound, but when they text back, then you got to jump on and engage live. So, so definitely be willing to do that, um, especially if you're new to the virtual model, right? The last thing you want to do is trying to onboard a bunch of people with you if you're just getting started in in virtual sales. What you want to do is get a predictable system. Again, you know, these are the things that have to happen all the times: getting leads, qualifying leads scheduling appointments or getting proposals out, closing deals and getting commissions paid. Like you have to be able to execute that entire battle rhythm. I call it, that's that's your main operation in the solar sales business. You have to be able to execute that predictably, repeatably yourself before you wanna onboard anybody else or, or scale up your system, right? Cause that's the core operation of your business right there. Not just the sales piece, the lead piece, the sales piece, the getting them installed, the getting the commissions paid piece, and then knowing how much of those commissions need to be reinvested to keep the marketing engine rolling as well, right? You heard Dan talk about in the past of it's sort of a it's sort of a feedback loop, right? It's a feedback loop, which means that a certain percentage of all of your commission revenue should be automatically allocated, you know, reallocated back towards keeping the marketing going, whether that means purchasing another block of leads or funding the next handful of advertising campaigns so that the the machine the engine continues to run and continues to produce produce results for you yep yeah that's absolutely correct and the other thing too is i know we've talked a lot before about how and i know joe we both really look at it this way but the cpa is kind of like that holy grail business metric but if we're really boiling it down a little bit past that not all cpas are created equal right so to speak you're going to have some moments where you might have acquired a new piece of business, but it was only a three and a half kilowatt system, right? Your margins and your commissions are not going to be that significant significant on that size system as maybe they would be if you sold a 30 kilowatt system. So even though the CPA really is still sort of that number that I'm focusing on is, hey, can I get a new deal at under $1,500, under $1,000? That's because I have a big enough sample size to know what my average system is. And for me, last year, average system was about 10 and a half kilowatts. So yes, as a true average, right, I've had some that were 20 kilowatts and some that were five kilowatts. Obviously didn't make as much on the five and made a lot more on the 20. And when it averages out, I know that a healthy CPA for me is $1,500 or less. Sometimes though, if you're really starting out early on, don't get blinded just by thinking like, oh, I got a new sale if it was only three kilowatts because you might not make enough money, quite frankly, to cover your advertising budget on just that three kilowatt sale. Early on, you might need to really focus on like, what was my total revenues generated for my total expense in marketing? What's that relationship in that ratio? Um, and I would suggest, I mean, we were talking about this the other day, but if you can double your money, right? If you spend $5,000 and you can go earn $10,000 in commissions, that's probably a pretty good initial place to be. We, we would like with where we're at in our business today to see it be a little bit higher than that even. But I think if you had $2,000 to start out and you can take the $2,000 and go earn a $4,000 commission from selling a system, you still netted $2,000 of, of profit. Now, again, of that $2,000 of profit, though, you probably need to set aside a, a portion of that, figure out whatever that number is. If we were just using those numbers, uh, I'd probably say at least $500, set aside $500 to be able to reinvest back into more advertising. And then take the 1500 and you can use that as your personal earnings, your personal life money, and then do it again and again and again, right? On one particular deal, that's not going to yield a lot. But if you can scale it and get this going with three, four, five, and six, now, you, now you've got a really successful feedback loop happening. And then the question just becomes, okay, well, what kind of business do you want to have? Are you looking to scale out and build a huge team and provide leads and opportunities to other people? Or are you just looking to have a nice self-contained solo solar sales profession, which I think is all there's value to that as well, because 
there's lifestyle flexibility that goes with that. So it just, it just depends on, you know, what you aspire to accomplish. The, the marketing system that you all probably are most familiar with that I use here at Solar Surge is the social media organic, well, you know, content marketing essentially, right? And so in other words, I want my content to get in front of potential customers so that when they want to do business or when they want to talk shop on a solar power system, they're thinking of me, they're thinking of solar surge first, and they're clicking the button and, and they're, they're, they're taking my call to action, my invitation to, you know, book a, uh, uh, book a call to get a free, no obligation quote. That's how we phrase it on the main channel. Um, but the strategy that went, went behind that was all about, you know, I, I just decided that I want to. Frankly, I wanted the entire industry to know that I'm the go-to person to talk to about solar technology, particularly solar batteries. And that's why if you look at a lot of the top content on the channel, they, it, it's basically product comparison videos. It's product comparison videos similar to some that you might see in other spaces like, you know, different kind of tech gear, uh, videography, photography gear. You might see videos comparing one brand of camera to a different brand of camera. I just do the same thing for solar panels and batteries. And so I'm, I, I try to put myself in the mind of the consumer, right? Like if, if me, if I were shopping for products, like for example, when I shop for a new camera for YouTube, I may go to YouTube and type best YouTube cameras or best YouTube cameras for 2023 and just kind of see what pops up and I'll, I'll watch the content. I'll see what, what resonates with me. Are there, are there particular features that I should be looking for? Are there particular brands that I should uh, be looking for? And so, so the solar surge content strategy is to have that type of content for people who are comparison shopping solar power systems, right? So they might be comparing different brands of solar panels or different brands of inverters or different brands of batteries. And chances are, if you go to YouTube and you type in, you know, any of the top brands, solar panels, batteries, inverter, one versus the other, you're going to find a piece of solar surge content with me or with one of our other team members explaining the pros and cons, the benefits, and how one product stacks up against the other. But again, that was part of a larger strategy. I, if I first had to have this strategy of, I want everybody to know I'm the go-to person to talk to about this, particularly the batteries, right? I, and I just decided everybody should know about this. Everybody should know about this. And then when there's time to do business, you can, you can book a call with me or you can book a call with one of our team. So this is something that, you know, maybe not all of you have to do to the same scale that I've done it on YouTube. But you want to develop the reputation as you're the go-to person to talk to about solar in your area. And that's why I, I say that as you're doing sort of your initial uh, marketing, advertising, or lead purchasing to get your, your first full, you know, handful of deals in, in parallel to all that, you want to be developing a social media library of content of all your successful installs. If you have any kind of training content, any frequently asked questions, videos, videos that you might want to put on your Facebook page or your LinkedIn page, you should be constantly building that library because that's that's the long term going to pay you back with the organic lead flow where you might think, I mean, vir virtually it's it's zero cost of acquisition. It's just the cost of making those posts. Right. And the more and more that the platforms start recognizing you as an authority in that space. And again, it could, could just be local to your market, right? It may not be in a, a nationwide audience, but the more the platforms can pick up and recognize you as an authority in that space, then they're going to be more likely to recommend your content to more people and more people. And so again, you have sort of that, that flywheel effect. You start building up a number of, uh, a lot of momentum, and then that's going to flow you additional leads that you don't have to directly, you know, pay for it and purchase. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.